Hey everyone. This video is about the PEX series of calculator emulators which use relatively inexpensive Arduino-based hardware to emulate HP's Voyager series of calculators as well as the 41C. And Alex Garza, the creator of these devices, was kind enough to send me uh, three different models in exchange for my honest thoughts. And they come either as pre-built units or as do-it-yourself component kits uh, that are to be soldered together. And so I've got two pre-built devices, a PX15C and a 41C, as well as a component kit for a PX16C. And in this video I'll talk through the pre, uh, two pre-built models and then we'll try to build the 16C with the help of my kids. So here we have a PX15C alongside the original HP15C and you can see the PX is, uh, has a smaller width and height although it's a little bit thicker and the display on the PX uses a 192 uh, by 64 uh, dot LCD, which simulates the original segmented LCD nicely. Although it's not quite as high contrast as the original device, but it's quite readable. And you can also see that there's an extra status bar on the PX, which was not in the original Voyages. Uh, it also has a real-time clock. Uh, the keyboard on the PX uses the same layout as the original, but of course pressing the small round switches is quite a different experience from pressing bevel keys on the original Voyager. Uh, the switches do have a fairly tactile click though, and they register properly. For those who are interested, Guido Socha has created an open source STL file for 3D printing uh, beveled keys for this device as well as documents for uh, keyboard labels. On the top of the calculator is a uh, six pin port uh, for uploading new firmware and you can do that uh, although you will need a AVR SPI programmer with a special 6x1 pin adapter. And Alex does release firmware updates fairly regularly. For example, the latest firmware update for the 15C supports a two line display. And I'll include a link in the show description uh, for Alex's demo of this. Well, the PX devices use modified versions of the original device ROMs with a a hardware emulation layer, so they should reproduce the behavior of the original devices accurately. Uh, but the PX15C is quite a bit faster than the original, uh, even through its emulation layer. So you'll notice uh, it's faster on interactive operations. So even if we do, um, say, 45 sign on both devices, uh, the PX uh, will. Uh, return about it's about four to five times faster. Uh, the PX15C also has 160 registers, 96 more than the original. Now I'm not going to talk in depth about how to use the PX15C since it's the same as the original, uh, which I have other videos on, but it's worth noting the PX has an extra configuration menu that doesn't exist on the original, and to access this uh, we turn the calculator off and then hold down zero while pressing the on button. And here we can read instructions on how to access and change settings. Uh, when we let go of the zero key, uh, we see the settings menu. And so here we can see settings for um, backlight, uh, intensity and timeout. Uh, there's also a screen contrast setting. Uh, in a sleep setting, which um, I have set to two minutes. Uh, here we can also enable a key beep, uh, set um, the time format um, and the time and date. Uh, if we press 9, we can access advanced settings. So here we can adjust some things like the keyboard debounce time. And um, we can also see the current battery level uh, and set the low battery indicator threshold. Uh, so to exit out of the config screen, we press on again. So here's the PX41C, which emulates the venerable HP41C, uh, but with a landscape form factor. And uh, the PX uses the same chip as the other 
devices in the series <clears throat> and according to Alex it runs again about four times faster than the original. It also has two and a half times more memory than the original HP 41C and it's neat to see the 41C function functionality in a landscape form factor and I think the keyboard is fairly logically laid out. Uh, it's, the layout is similar but not exactly the same as the Swiss Micro's DM41L device and like that device it puts uh, the arithmetic operations to the left of the digits uh, like the original 41C series. And But the PX41C doesn't come with any built-in modules or expandability uh, but it still does have some advantages over the 15C in terms of support for alpha characters uh, which in particular can make programming easier. Alex is currently working on an upgraded device called the PX41CX uh, which will use a new hardware platform and support a portrait uh, format like the original CX. Uh, it also supports 600 registers and extra flash memory to the allow loading libraries such as the Advantage module. And Alex says it will also support the ability to upload or download user memory to a PC using a USB to serial, serial adapter. So lastly let's have a look at the kitset version of the PX16C. And so here we can see all the components the kit comes with. Uh, so we can see the case components and the PCB. And uh, here is the AT Mega 328 uh, and 8 bit microcontroller, the same as the Arduino Uno. Uh, and there's also a display, uh, and as well as some uh, resistors and capacitors, and a bag of 40 switches for the buttons. So if we zoom into the PCB, we can see that soldering these components together should be fairly easy because there are clear labels on the board for where each component sits and the pins of each component fall through the holes on the board. So we just need to apply solder to each pin on the reverse side. Because it's a multi-layered PCB with all the connections between the components sandwiched in the middle of the circuit board, there are no wires to solder. Uh, so the instruction sheet gives the best order to solder the components and even my five-year-old could put the components in. <clears throat> my older kids who are eight and nine actually did the soldering. And so here's the back of the PCB after we finished and you can see it wasn't the neatest job but and the first time we tried to turn it on it actually didn't work. Uh, but with a magnifying glass we found two soldering points for their display were touching uh, so we desoldered those and did them again and everyone actually cheered when the calculator started up. So once uh, you've soldered the components to the PCB, the last step is to actually assemble the case and a quick tip for this is to attach the bottom of the case first along with the middle columns uh, and then screw in the front face last. So here's the fully assembled uh, 16C and we can see uh, it running in hex mode, we can do some arithmetic. I'm a big fan of the PX devices. They're a way to get in an expensive Voyager or 41C calculator to play with, uh, especially if you go for the kit set version. And I really enjoyed the experience of putting together the kit set. Alex has made the process fairly foolproof and it's a great way to learn or practice soldering and a great learning experience certainly for kids. I also uh, appreciated the experimental features Alex has been adding such as support for the clock on the Voyagers and the double line display which is quite unique. And I've seen some people online criticise the project um, around the firmware not being fully open sourced. Uh, but you can download uh, the firmware for any of the devices and load it onto your PX hardware. So I recommend it people check out the project. I'll leave links in the video description uh, for places uh, where you can find out more and order the devices. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.